And you are back on the Tortoise and Hare experience. Uh, you just heard the song Break Away uh, by our guest, Willie Bass. And um, I guess it's now time to open up for another experience, Max. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Experience. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit that's going on with um, my artist, Michael Grant. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah, you know, this is what I, w- I want to warn um, all of the musicians out there. If you are going to carry anything with you outside of Los Angeles, it's illegal. Define, so define <laughs> carry. <laughs> uh-huh. um, you know, he didn't have anything of any, uh, you know, m- mass substance on him. He was just going over the border in Canada and um, got popped with a little, little something, something, and uh, spent a night in jail. And Smoking. Yeah, you know. <laughs> sometimes, you know, when you're on tour for a long period of time, made and, a good press know, release. It, it, you know, <laughs> Michael is always good for a good press release. You know, that's <laughs> he's never won from the press. Um, but uh, just a warning, because it, it is a huge hassle and a huge expense. Um, just be smart and don't carry anything outside of the United States or even in the United States. Um, there are places where it's legal and there are places where it's not. And, um, you know, just use your brain. And, um, but we're, you know, wishing Michael. That's that's been the experience over the past right. twenty four hours with Michael. Yeah, I, I read that and I was just like, I was like, that's see, that's why bands need to have uh, the one guy, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, the one, the guy, one guy, that, guy that carries. <laughs> yeah, the one guy that carries it. That's just like, oh, you were carrying. We didn't know. Yeah, oh. we didn't know. But you know, it is it's a huge hassle, and then you're not allowed back into uh, Canada. So now you know the Ellie Guns tour. Can get messed up because of that. So, you gotta you gotta think, you gotta think ahead. It's not worth that ha- it. That happened to Paul McCartney too. Absolutely, it did. It's happened to almost yeah. all of our musicians. But I think he got back in there somehow within well, the he's last Paul couple of years. But it's been what 20, yeah. 30 years yeah. that he had to lay out. Yeah, it was really rough. Yeah. It was really rough, and it wasn't like he had a lot That's on a him as well. Too, to lose. Yeah, yeah, it is, and um, and it's sad, uh, you know, and. That's another reason why, you know, Kara was talking earlier about legalizing uh, cannabis and cannabis oils, you know, Mm -hmm. for those kind of medicinal purposes um, throughout the United States and the world so that, you know, it's helpful instead of you, you know, spending a lot of money going to jail for a a really ridiculous thing. So what's your experience? My experience um, is I've been... uh, Occurring, occurring, is that the right word? I don't know. A re- a re- recurring, a lot of debt, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm usually not a big debt guy. Usually, the, yeah. you know, the only debt that I carry is just, you know, car payment. Yeah. But uh, I, I decided that there's two forms of debt in your life. There, there's the good debt and there, there's the bad debt. The bad debt is all just like, you know, when you owe, you know, tons of money for shit that you don't need, that you don't want that you don't have to have there's the good debt like you know i went to debt because i needed dental work sure, so sure. Th- th- that's a good debt that's something that i'm like okay you know what i can mm-hmm. s- foresee myself going into to debt for something like that right. school loans school loans exactly um i, I just recently went out and I purchased a, a brand new um flash for my camera right that's you know you know that's a good debt yeah and then um i uh, just uh picked up a new lens as well and uh so now i i owe you know about two grand in debt you know in good debt and bad debt i don't have any bad debt so right now you know if, if i was to you right. know if they were to say how much debt do you have i'd be like two grand and so uh, it, it's funny because like two months ago i had just finished paying off uh, my other debts that, that I owed, uh, and that was for my car, my car, because I got to uh, my tires needed to be realigned, and and I needed new tires all at the same time. I don't have that. How kind does of that money. happen? That always happens when yeah. you have to just do everything at the you know one time, and you never right. have the money, and it's 
<laughs> right. So you got to put it on yeah. the credit card. Yeah. And so I did, you You're know, you have credit cards. Yeah. So I was so like happy that I didn't have debt, but then I was like, ah, oh, now I got to go through this again. So, uh, and again, that's another reason why I picked up so many different other odd jobs is because I'm trying to get rid of this two grand debt by the end of the summer, by, you know, hopefully by November, that way I can go into bad debt <laughs> right, <laughs> so right. I can buy my, you know, my nieces and nephews some, some gifts for Christmas. You know, make them, make them presents. No uh, more. Take them to a game. Yeah, I, I could do that. But um, in, in December, there are no games to go to. You know? there, there's football games, but I'm not going to spend, you know, $200 for a football ticket, you yeah. know, for, with my niece or my nephew that they're not going to appreciate it. They're just going to be like, oh, we're here at a football. It's like, no, you don't understand. Football games are a Take premium. Take them to a tie-dye party. I'm telling okay. you, they'll have the best time of their life. They really, they truly will. The, and they'll remember that. You know, when you buy children toys and things like that, they're like, oh, that's great. And then they don't play it with it, you know, 24 hours after you give it to them. It breaks, they forget. But an experience, they always remember. They always okay. remember. Because take pictures, you know, and bring it back. It's like, oh, remember we did that? Yeah, oh, man, Uncle Turtle, that was the best. I'm sure they don't call you they Uncle don't. Turtle, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even I'm, they don't even know that side of me yet. right good thank you know god I mean? yeah I, I don't want them not that i don't want them to know that but it's just like hey i'm a person you know you got i'm a person <laughs> <laughs> you know so so that's what i've been experiencing uh willie um we've shared a, an experience so uh, what experience have you been going through as far as debt <laughs> <laughs> any general. experience it doesn't have to be about debt um been real grateful lately. Heart attack a uh, year ago. Everything stopped on a dime and I had to make some changes. Grateful to be here, be around, and to experience life. Yeah. Definitely. With or without debt. Right, <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Just waking up in the morning and, and just being grateful. Oh, yeah. It's, it. you know, I'm so grateful for normal, simple things like air to breathe, sun shining, yeah. being able to walk, <laughs> swallow. <Yes>. That hat. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very cool. It's, no, it's a, no more big deals, you know, really. They really aren't. What's a big deal for you? Like, you know, on an, on words, an everyday. Words. Words. words yeah. Are, yeah. Nice. Um, I know I've that always have... valued words, I guess, in being a singer, you know, right. um, words mean things. Right. And you're multi-talented. Thank you. Know. you. Well, and, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm stating the facts here. <laughs> stating the facts. No, you, you are so well accomplished and um, have been through you know rock and roll history you, you know truly you know work in the streets and you know i don't know if if you live in los angeles you will see willie bass's van <laughs> rolling down the street with this big it, it's awesome you know you've played with some of the greatest bands in history and uh, made a mark and you continue to do so i know you have a new project coming out that's so that I can't talk about. Right. Great. Darn it. <laughs> Off the couch. But really. I've, I've right. got ton mastery experiences. You yeah, know, but, yeah. Which were really cool. Were you on her yeah. show? I remember if we were on the show or not, but I remember her emceeing or something at the country club. Along about then was when Black Sheep was headlining everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I had Slash in the band. It's always very nice to me. Right. Yeah. She's know, a great woman. Yeah, she was good. Cared, and she knew a lot about rock, metal, you know, and what was going on. And, you know, I knew her in the KNAC days and also the pirate radio days. So uh, it was just devastatingly shocking to find out uh, that, that she had. Yeah, it seemed to have happened don't know, so I don't get quickly, it, you know. so quickly. That's you know another a testament to. You. Well, yeah, we've got to pay attention. Stuff. That's what I gained out of 
you know, nothing else out of my heart attack is, is that we really need to pay attention to our bodies and the little signals because when something's not right, your body will usually tell you, mm -hmm. you know, you'll get warning signs and ignore there's consequences. Man. Right. And <laughs> you, you know, know, a lot of musicians don't realize that because when they're on stage, they're doing a lot of damage to their body. You know? Whether they're uh, jumping up and down in the wrong way, um, mm -hmm. you know, running back and forth, they're not hydrating. You well, know? we can, you know, musicians, we don't realize it, but just breathing the wrong way can, exactly. it is, you know, not. You see these guys breathing from the top of their chest. Right. And then they you go know. out and they smoke cigarettes. Yeah, it's not, you know? not And they're good. oh no, it <laughs> it makes me it makes me have you know, like more girth. No. Yeah. It's from girth that wasn't the right I mean, word. When I breathe, <laughs> I use my whole lung. I breathe from the from your diaphragm. The top of my lung all the way down every every breath. Even if I'm just singing a, a short, quiet part, I use my whole lung. Right. So uh you know that's that's real important the breath support it's like being a fighter if someone's gonna you know punch you in the stomach you know you you, you brace for that mm -hmm. you know you strengthen your diaphragm and that's, well, you, that's you the came. key to not that's why i can sing and not get hoarse like uh when i was out with lynch we did like 28 shows in 30 days or something like that night after night after night right. and i never got a horse yeah you come from a classical music um background so you trained that way first? Um, yeah, I warm up a little bit, you know, but I'm, I don't, I'm not one of those, like I hear Axel, <laughs> Axel warms down after the set for like an hour and a half or something like mm -hmm. that. I, I, I don't know what that's about, but. That's actually <laughs> a know. very good thing to do. Um, yeah, no, it is. It is so that you can, calm your vocal cords down because it's a muscle so you want to start relaxing it mm -hmm. you know and after because of the way that axel sings and it's um it's all up in his throat mm -hmm. um he will blow it out very quickly and develop nodes if he doesn't uh restretch it in and relax it back down. yeah i try to keep my throat open as much as possible and i sing from my face mm -hmm. so it's it's not turtle about, does that too. for me it's yeah. not about the throat at all yeah and keep that open but yeah it teaches own you know I mean, just i think that my my breathing uh definitely helps me get hoarse night after night it's like w really cool because the more i sing the stronger my voice gets and it opens up and Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I, I saw that um, you are uh, uh, the cultural ambassador to the Sunset Strip. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was dubbed that by uh, okay. the Channel 5 news guys. So the media, Sam, w. <laughs> Sam Rubin and those guys, you know, it was like, yeah. you know, I've sang classical, I sang at Carnegie Hall, uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral, Radio City Music Hall. I've done all of this work and um, all they wanted to know about was the keg parties. <laughs> <laughs> it was like all of these accomplishments, you know, uh, the choir I was in when I was young, we won, we received two Grammy Awards. Um, you know, and all they wanted to know about was the party. So, yeah. you know, crazy? it is what it is. You take what you can get. <laughs> uh, but we, you know, we had we had some crazy parties. They were like, you know, three bands, three kegs, and a thousand wow. people. Yeah. We outgrew my studio, so we had to start. You know, we first started renting like the American Legion halls, or you know, different halls and then we found out we could rent the whiskey in the roxy and that was when uh you know we started promoting shows uh at the, the venue on sunset strip so kind of kind of pioneer you know and then these other the these other promoter people started charging the bands for tickets and stuff totally against that so i would promote my own shows right know. the pay to play it's a it's a funny thing you know because 
all of the bands um, from the 80s, that's when that really started and, mm -hmm. and until now. And, and there's no way that these poor guys can you know, start a band and have that big of a following where they can sell the amount of tickets that they need to to be able to play the, you know, the upper places. Well, you could sad. if you work if you work work out a system, you could make money like that. But um, I think that that's not our job. Right. You know what I mean? People, the promoters go, well, you you know, you didn't draw in San Diego. It's like, well, what promotion did you do? Well, I went on Facebook and did an invite. That's not promoting, man. Right. You know, I mean, I've been a promoter. I've been an artist. I've been a manager. I've been on all sides of the fence. So, you know, I know what it means to put on a concert and, and you know, run full page ads in the music trades, you know, want, run 250 television commercials and really promote the fuck. You know, it's right. like so weird. These guys, yeah, well, I did a Facebook invite to 20 of my friends and they call that promotion. Right. Yeah, give me a break, dude. Yeah. A lot yeah. of going out, flyering and you know, meeting people. Oh, it was back in the day. It was the, the, you couldn't walk up the sidewalk. It was people all the way across on both sides, not just on the Rainbow mm -hmm. and the Roxy, but on the other sides, too. And you know, all of the bands was it was a healthy competition because you know we, everybody wanted to outdo the other band and and we would outdo the other band like like you know we would show up to the troubadour with 250 lights you know what i mean we had so many lights that we had to tap into the fucking phone pole we couldn't <laughs> even they didn't even have enough power at the troubadour to handle our show you know and that that's just how serious we you know we were having fun but it was also serious business at the same time. And I think that got lost, you know, and even with the grunge thing, they kind of made it like uncool to dress up and 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 play and, you know, have it be a show. Right. I believe it's yeah. show business, you know what I mean? It's like, I've just always admired, you know, bands like Alice Cooper or, you know, um, that just dress up and play and they have a show and there's you know pyro and fog yeah, you know and, it you makes know, it very visual. interesting yeah you know you don't want to go to a show and just stand there and watch somebody just like mm, nah, nah, nah. it's you know I, if i'm spending my money to go yeah. see you i want to see i want to see something i want you to see that you put in an effort and that's the way you dress the way you talk you know everything about the show um Absolutely. it doesn't have to have massive you know amounts of money put behind it as far as you know visuals oh, well, or whatever <laughs> it does help but <laughs> but you know it's like why am i going to spend my money right you know? well that's what i admire about kiss you know i mean that's that's kiss is an extreme example but they actually care that people are getting their bang for the buck when they pay you know 50 to 100 bucks for those tickets you know they're giving them a show that they're never going to Absolutely. And you want to see that, you know, I don't want to, oh, yeah. I just, I'll play my own guitar and sing in the mirror if I just, you know, <laughs> entertain myself, you know, somebody entertain me, entertain me. When I was with Alice, that was like the greatest thing is being part of that show and, you know, how much goes into it and the, he the amount of stuff time. going on, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> from, from, you know, the set designs to yeah. what was going on underneath the stage was Absolutely. a whole nother show. You know, so it was it was intense, and I really appreciated that, not only as a performer, but also sitting in the audience watching him, and, and you know, and, and knowing that he's continuing to do that to this day. And cool. yeah, and, you know, so there's bands like that out there that are are bringing that back and bringing you know the fun shows back, and you know, it's not all like you know, quick get on stage and play and get off. You know, it's it's more, you know, let me give you what you came for. Yeah. yeah, so, we, you know, we want to encourage Rob them. Zombie's another one that I really admire. Played Rocklahoma a couple of years ago, and uh, I believe Rob was one of the headliners. I think Chicken Foot was the headliner, but he showed up with <laughs> three semis, and I'm like, damn, what's he, get, what, what's he got? Yeah. In three, what did it take? to have three semis of gear you know and we're awesome rock oklahoma and they're providing everything you know and uh it, it was we, it enough. was just a great dynamic show and and 
It was like if you looked over to the left three seconds too long, you'd miss what <laughs> happened on the right. And it was just never a dull moment. And those guys kicked out. You know, he, he had to have at least, now I'm saying at least a million dollars worth of LED, wow. you know, screens. Mm -hmm. Of course. I mean, everything was covered with... <laughs> With the LEDs, even even John Five had a guitar that was an LED screen. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's so cool! So it was like unbelievable and just on and cracking and never a dull moment. That makes and it really that. really fun. Yeah. And you know, at that time, you don't realize that how many people were affected when you know the whole grunge scene came in. And no disrespect to grunge, because I like the music. Well, no, let's but, let's you know, throw them under the bus. Yeah. All right, okay. Yeah. So you let's know? throw them completely <laughs> under the bus. <laughs> Um, no. <laughs> like like Ted Nugent was like, no, I was I think Simmons said, yeah, well, Kurt Cobain, just tell him to make the check out to me, <laughs> you know, and if he doesn't want the success. If he doesn't want it, then, then you know, Nugent we're happy like, to take you know, it. Yeah. That guy, you but, know. you know, there was all these other people that were affected by that from, you know, the designers for the clothes to the oh, set yeah. designers to, you know, the wardrobe mistresses. All of these people had families, and all of a sudden, all of that was gone. Well, and you, now, know, you, you know, know, Eddie Vedder didn't really drive a VW bus. He had the Porsche in the back. Right, you know. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he was trailing it. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's, uh, that's true. You know, I, I just, well, part just, of it's bullshit. Well, that know. just goes to show you how powerful that movement was. It really was. It was you know? very, very powerful. And now it's done, please. And can we bring back the rock and roll? I don't know. Music is always cyclical, so it'll come back. I just, you know, I, I really want to sure. hear some rock. Okay, that's, well, let's hear some rock hear. right now. I think that's a good idea. Okay, uh, we're gonna hear some more from Willie Bass as uh, we hear "Tears Are Falling," and then we're gonna have more with our guest Willie Bass. And what? Can I say something real quick? No, no, no. no don't no, say. No, no speaking for you. <laughs> Go ahead. No, "Tears Are Falling." Uh, this was an effort that I did with. Uh, uh, a writer, uh, a journalist out of Canada, his father-in-law passed of cancer. And so uh, we got together to fund the hospice that took care of his father-in-law. Uh, when we started doing it, the, the album was, uh, I can't remember the name of the album now, but we did, we did an album, it turned into a double album and everybody and their brothers on the album and this was my song that I contributed to that for Cancer Care. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. I wanted to say that uh, that was from an album called uh, For the Heroes? The, uh, wor a World with Heroes. There was a Kiss song called World Without Heroes. So uh, this is a take world, a world with heroes. It was a... a uh, Kickstarter program to benefit a cancer hospice in Canada. So it, it like more than tripled the money that uh, the goal uh, set and uh, very, very successful. And everybody from Don Dockin to Doug Aldridge, uh, Doro, everybody contributed. And uh, check it out if you can. It's available on iTunes and everywhere digital outlets across the world a world with heroes mm -hmm. buy that so you can definitely yeah uh willie um you're no stranger to podcast i, I saw that you uh, are you still doing a podcast or yes a matter of fact it's tonight oh, really? <laughs> i do tuesday nights <laughs> okay and, and what is it is it a podcast somewhat uh like this experience or is it well, it's called Tales from the Sunset Strip, and it's thesunsetstriponline.com. Um, and I basically do an hour uh, with interviewing my friends and uh, talking about the experience, you know, current events. Yeah. You know. What's your take on the strip now? What strip? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly my point. <laughs> No, we were we were Al Bain. We went up we went up last night and kind of hung out. Uh, saw my friends play uh, in Hendrix's Gypsies. Uh, they played the whiskey. And got a bite to eat and then we walked up by what used to be Gazzari's. Mm -hmm. And I understand Jay Z bought that and turned it into a dance club. Really, Jay Z? I didn't. Yeah. No, it was Jay Z. I know that. Um, 
Brian Cabrera owned it previously yeah. and sold it. So it's a trip. It's like a ban- abandoned wasteland up there. Yeah. You know, I mean, even Geffen Records, you know, all of that scene that was so prominent is kind of just uh, wasteland. It's so sad to see that, you know, as we talked earlier, that in the 80s, it was a madhouse. Yeah. It was so much fun, you know, glitter and uh, <laughs> silly string everywhere. And, you know, thanks to Poison and those bands. That are you know, and I don't remember much crime about no. that time. I don't remember people I remember getting people, mugged or yeah. robbed or, you know, it was like dr- dr- drugs and alcohol. But everybody was just... Right, now there are people like a shooting each party. other on the street. It's, you know, at the awards the other night, at the BET, did you hear about this? It's BET, automatically there's really? trouble. Really? Why That's do you just, think that? Every year that, you know... BET and the Source, yeah. the exactly. Source Awards, there's yeah, well, always trouble, and that's when I know, oh, it must be on, or it must be that type of, type of season again. What happened? Dabbing and a shooting. It was two for the price of one. You know, <laughs> that's just crazy. You go there, you're dressed up. If you're dressed up, you can't you, you can't shoot anybody. I was it just glad that like Chris Rock was hosting it. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he always cracks on the BET. Yeah, yeah, he does. Experience. He cracks on everything. <laughs> he's, he's Wow. So a stabbing <laughs> and a shooting, huh? It's driving and a shooting, you know? Uh-huh. This is this is supposed to be a good time celebrating your artists and not, you know, about drama you should leave your drama on the street well that, that was one of the things that kind of tripped me out coming here from texas you know because in texas you can go to a grocery store and people just go good morning you have a flat uh pull over and help mm-hmm. you know and here you could say good morning to somebody at ralph's on sunset and get shot it's right like, <laughs> yeah what do we you know i would watch the news and there's four or five shootings not like that in other places. Right. You know, shooting maybe once a month or something. Out so here, Los it's Angeles, just like let's clean up our act. Every day, multiple. Days. You know what? Part of it, I feel, is we don't know how to interact with each other anymore. We don't know how to interact, you know, through like texts and not not through social actual, media. Yeah, not not actual like human communication. Right. Yeah. Well, I think they're, they're, you know, that situation, government and the businesses are trying to, you know, to isolate us. And, you know, They've so done they a great job. Control. <laughs> they can make more money. Yeah. Ridiculous. It's true. Um, you know, when everything is surrounding these, uh, these little contraptions, your education is on them, your social awareness is on them way Your that you interact are on them. exactly and thank you very much for those um it, you know it's just you go to dinner and you're not having a conversation with anybody anymore right because right. everybody's on their phone i say when you get to dinner put your phones in the center <laughs> the first person that picks it up has to buy for everybody else I think that's, that's the way it should one. be. <laughs> not, not, not even that. You, you, your, your phone shouldn't even, you leave it in the car or it should not even be seen. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's, we just live like, you know, what happened before? What happened before? Did, well, you know, my, we mine is, to, is like, a business tool, but, but it, it, I guess, you know, it's like a business when we went tool to the rainbow, everybody, we sat down, everybody pulled out their phones. Right. <laughs> we ordered, got into the conversation and then. After we ate, everybody pull out their phones. So it's right. It's, it's like, like they're a taking a picture of, of the food, and they're taking a picture <laughs> of you know. It's like it's crazy. I had a conversation with a six-year-old. A six-year-old mm-hmm. told me, "I'm doing business." <laughs> That's I what said, she said. Doing business. What? What kind of business you run? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. just he just put up his hand to me like this. I, I got this under control. I have my phone. I'm taking care of business. I'm like you are six. Jesus. Let, let, let the little guy make his money, man. Yeah. Come well, on. I'm well. I started working at seven, so okay. you know I appreciate that. But come on, you know, parents, let's put a little, you know, a little Ima- block on that. Imagine if you were seven years old right now and you were working. 
you would have a phone you you would you would be the antithesis of that person oh, well i had God. a paper route when i was about that age you know, and I was making, but, yeah and i guess if i had had a smartphone i could have really blew it up <laughs> you yeah. would have people <laughs> delivering for you and you would have been doing nothing right that's right you wouldn't have even seen a bicycle <laughs> You would only see one on like your Instagram or something like, oh, there's a bicycle. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, it's, true. it's true. Oh, it's let a me, sad world. Let me plug uh, Willie's website. It's uh, WillieBase.com. There you can find links to your Twitter, to your YouTube. All, and this, all this stuff we just yeah, talked about. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, log on there. Uh, thank you so much for letting us play your music. Um this is uh, really great. Uh, now, are you doing uh, solo stuff now? Because I know you're a part of uh, Black Sheep. Um, yeah, I'm a solo artist. I've been a product. Looking to play more. You know, we'll be playing more. Uh, just check out my website. Dot com. W i l l i e b a s s e. And uh, you can get all the latest. Or you can, everything's linked up together. Or you can go to, you know, Tales from the Sunset Strip, the Sunset Strip and get it there. It's all linked up together. For, for that, uh, the Tales of the Sunset Strip, uh, are, are you trying to bring back the Sunset Strip? Or, because it's one thing to talk about the heyday of it, you know, but it's like, well, what are we doing to, re to make the Sunset Strip back? You know, well, I mean, it's a, there's it's, a lot it's, of, of I don't think it ever, it ever, you know, you can't kill the Sunset Strip. Man. See, because the, to me, the Sunset Strip encompasses more than just the 80s era. That was just one era. You had the Rat Pack. You you had the Valentino, for God's sake. Like, uh, what's the guy? Uh, with the, Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin, man, mm -hmm. you know. And then the whole Michael Jackson thing, you know, it's just like so much. You can never, ever run out of it. Now, I'm, I was a fan of uh, Elvis and Martin in that whole era. You know, my grandma used to watch Johnny Carson. And, so I was into it. You know, I say that they say that wants me. It, it's sort of been my my life with uh, you know, those influences and influence me that I grew up on. I came out and sort of met those people. Then just one thing. Came out here, I was sleeping on the bus stop on Hollywood Boulevard and Western. And I used <laughs> to vacuum the floors at Buddy Miles studio and trade for a locker because I always had gear. I had you know, a lot of gear. Yeah. <laughs> I but I had nowhere know. to live but I had the gear, man. You know, like, who has the gear rules? I had all of this gear for a locker to uh, for vacuuming Buddy and cleaning the studio and on that bus stop bass player got pneumonia in Seattle or something calls me up bass I need you in Dallas and I'm from Dallas Fort Worth so my first gig my break with Buddy Miles who was Jimi Hendrix drummer was back home in Dallas Fort Worth I mean I had to learn the songs on a three-hour flight uh, but that was it's just been storybook like that amazing and so you know the when I had the Money Grind album out, the album that I gave you, um, I had bus benches all across LA. <laughs> and I made sure I got that bus bench that I used to sleep on. Oh, that's cool. Aww. So cool. Uh, that's on my Facebook page. You'll see the, you know, you'll go, what's with the bus stop bench? <laughs> well, that's the one I used to sleep on. Yeah. Symbolism, <laughs> people. Yep, yep. See, that's a great L.A. story. Yeah. You know, I mean, I love it. It's L.A. Anything could happen at any time. So just be ready. It's so true. <laughs> and take those opportunities. Don't, you know, don't ever say, you know, you know um, it's funny because 
when you're musicians, you you know you're you, sometimes you get nervous. And oh yeah. I for myself, I was performing at a club. I had random Wednesday night and band came in to take over the stage and jam and I was like yeah yeah go ahead I, you know take the stage until I realized it was Elton John and John Etwistle and Michael Bolton and shit threw them off <laughs> no like the, out of here. for real they asked me to sing with them and I said no what? oh no I said no <laughs> who does that who wow. in their right mind would say no to these three guys Max Watson Right there, saying no, like a fool. Well, you were already famous. No, I was not. I was absolutely not famous. And I'm standing there, like, with my mouth hanging open. Like, and I, I'm kicking my Was that one-on-one, on one or what, what, was that club down on uh, No, it was um, it was Bar One. Bar One, yeah. Yeah, yeah Bar One. Yeah, and um, daughter Danny constantly brings that up and throws it in my face. Well, you didn't do that. You know, so, you know, if you get the chance to sing with Elton John and, and you know, John at Whistle, God Rest His Soul, um, but uh, Michael Bolton, at any time in your life or career, opportunity. I'm not. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, nah, you know what, John, I'm too big for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's well, you so, are too many, big for so many John, eras and so many, uh, you know, it's just, I could go on and on and on and on. It's yeah. Hollywood, and it, I don't, you know, I don't think it'll ever die. It'll, it'll change. But it'll, it'll yeah, die. Well, we need to like revive it a little bit and so you you know, get the band back out there. Playing. We need to reboot the yeah. franchise. Yeah. That's that's what we need to do. Yeah. You know, here at NoHo Two in North Hollywood on Irvine Boulevard, they are encouraging all these cool young bands that come in there's um there's a, a night it's called town town thursday that they hold here as an open mic oh wow and just you know mark Doty's doing such a great thing with like encouraging these new young bands cool. and getting them out there and you know and from here they end up on the strip and you know and in big you know arenas um uh, a local favorite here is uh mitchell schaefer who has signed with monster and He's, um, he's tearing it up. He's doing yeah. great things. Mitchell is you know, on our show. Yeah. We're great doing a special guy. entertainment um, summit, like seminar, uh, in August called IES, uh, Independent Entertainment Summit. And it's a week of workshops here in North Hollywood. And every year they block off from like Burbank all the way to... Uh, Magnolia or a little bit beyond all the studios and the movie. They cover movie, movies, you know, music, modeling, the arts. So uh, IES, uh, Independent Entertainment Summit. And uh, I'm going to honor John Boubois and Mickey oh. Free this year. So I wonder who be might really be cool. singing with them. I don't know who the other honor, honorees are. Sure. Who do you think might be singing with Mickey Free and John? Hmm. Who knows? I wonder. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't sing with people. Man. More will be revealed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll stay tuned on that. Yep. Yep. Well, uh, really, thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Cool. And uh, for more information, log on to WillieBase.com. That's B-A-S-S-E. Dot com and I'll have all the links to your Twitter, your Facebook, uh, your YouTube, all that on the show notes. So everybody just uh, go ahead, log on to endoftheshelf.com for uh, all your link needs. Uh, when we come back, guess what we're doing? Show and Exactly. But before we do that, we are going to hear the song Po' Boy. Cool. <laughs> Good choice. Yeah. <laughs> 